Today I'm going to show you how to convert your multi-zone to a single zone. The first thing you need to do is turn the power switch off. The next step is to remove the top four trays. To remove the trays, you need to unplug the tray harnesses first. The tray harnesses are located on the right side here. First remove the harness itself from the re strain relief clip. Then click the tab on the front of the harness connector, pushing in and pull back. Next step to remove the trays is to lift these, well this tab was already down, but normally you have to lift these up. These keep the trays from falling out when you're loading the machine. Repeat this step for the remaining three trays. Now that we have the top four trays removed, your multi-zone should look like this with the insulating barrier in the middle. This is the next step. We need to remove the barrier. To remove the barrier, you take out the two front screws and unplug the harness in the rear. In some barriers they may have put tape or permagum on the sides depending on, on the barrier itself to seal the, the seams. So if there's any tape or permagum you should remove that as well. Now I'll remove the fasteners. Unplug the heater harness, squeezing these tabs. Now the barrier will pull straight out. The next step is to remove the upper blower. To remove the blower, you need to disconnect the harness. There's a screw holding the ground screw in, and there's two, sometimes three screws holding the upper fan in. next step is to remove all the permagum from the corners of the turning vanes. This permagum was to seal the corners so cold air from the bottom wouldn't find its way up to the top zone. The top zone runs warmer so it can be hard to control sometimes if you don't have that permagum in there. It's all right to leave the permagum in the back corners. Then we'll remove, there's three turning vanes here. One, two, three. Seems like a common problem when converting is they, people forget about this turning vein here. So now I'll remove these three vanes. careful not to drop this one down the chute. I've done that before. Uh, 
All right, the next step is to take one of the three turning vanes you just removed and install it in the top. Invert it so the screw slots are on the bottom and there's three holes up top locating where this will go. and tuck the no longer needed harness back in the corner out of the way so it doesn't get caught in the tray. Be sure to push the turning vane tight against the top and then tighten the screws up to hold it there. Tuck the heater harness out of the way as well to keep it from getting pinched inside of a tray. The next step is to reinstall the trays in the reverse order that you took them out. Putting the tray wheels in the guide rails. Plugging the harness back into where it was. And pushing the call this harness sheathing push the harness sheathing material back into the strain relief clip and be sure to pull the safety tabs down on the tray rails now we'll remove the tray barrier bracket under the third tray. There's three screws holding this bracket onto the tray. Actually there's four. The next step would be to change your decals on the door from multi-zone to single zone. If you don't already have these decals, you can order them online with the part number shown. Simply peel them off, or you could stick the other one over the top of these. The next step is to turn your power switch on and reconfigure the controller. Now I'm going to show you how to configure your single zone frozen from multi-zone to single zone. So you need to go into service mode, hit 4, 0, the last for your password, standard passwords 2314, then hit 7, and it'll say hit 7 again for editing, and keep thumbing through. So you get the single zone frozen. Here we're at single zone frozen minus five. There's a minus two, and there's a w one with no ver uh, number at the end. And all it is is that's a minus 15 set point. The minus two is a minus 12 set point, and the one without a number is minus 10 set point. So we'll save it on minus five here. Back out of the service mode hit zero and you'll see you have two temperature sensors reading now T3 and T2 